It is a great night. And you know what? Part of why it's a great night, and this is kind of going to be under discussed. It's going to kind of go under the radar. What a sloppy fourth quarter with all the kinds of things that a coaching staff in a victory gets to look at in the next week of practice and preparation. Uh, see, I, I want that. I want these warts. I want these flaws. I want all these things that coaches can get on these players about. I also want Lincoln Riley to realize like he is po- – partly responsible for why that fourth quarter became as close as it was with those two deep balls. You know, and we're, we love Lincoln Riley. We can see what he's doing with the offense. We can see the transformation, love what he's doing generally, but we're not going to let mistakes slide. And those two deep balls, that was just careless, lazy coaching. And so he can look in the mirror and say, Hey, I need to do a better job. You know, when we get into a situation where we're just trying to put the game to bed in the fourth quarter, I don't want my defensive line to be susceptible to injury and more time on the field. I don't want my offensive line to be susceptible to injuries and more time on the field. I want to get out of here with a win. I want to make this as clean and painless as possible. Those two deep balls very definitely got in the way of that. Hopefully Lincoln Riley is going to look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what? I need to be more responsible uh, and focus on the task at hand. That was a that was a distraction, you know, for the whole USC team. It made those final several minutes go by a lot more slowly. They did. Now, that was- Matt- oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. It just seemed like that was his, his tin cup moment. You know what I mean? He went, through, he went there one, right? And he just had to go again, didn't he? It was like, I'm like, think to myself, you know, and you know, the throw was exact. So I, at first I thought maybe it was a bad route by, I think it was Addison on the first one. Maybe he ran, ran a bad route. I don't know. But the same one, it was almost the exact same result. Just, you know, about 15 yards to the right and way off line. So, yeah, that was a bit yeah, disappointing. Yeah. And, you know, the first time, okay, maybe you're just trying to establish some timing, but the second time, like, that's that's just ego getting in the way. You know, that's just avarice instead of just doing the unsexy, responsible thing. Anyway, so much from that fourth quarter is going to cre- enable the coaching staff to say, hey, stay on task, stay focused. I like that heading into Fresno State. Now, Matt, there was nobody who, who uh, was ready for Clay Helton to leave as much as you were. What do you think about the fact that Clay Helton probably ended Scott Frost's career tonight with a historic win for Georgia Southern over Nebraska in Lincoln? <laughs> Here's the thing that USC fans are going to love. Now, I was not focused on that game. I, I was fully focused on USC, you know, because, hey, it's now serious business at USC football. Like, well, as, 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 the head of, as the head of Trojans Wire, you're usually really a little busy right after the game, too. I should be. Yeah, you know, I had to file my four stories right after the game. But last year... With Clay Helton, like no one cared about the actual product. It was all about the coaching search, who is going to be the next coach. So I could still kind of flip the remote. Tonight it was 100% USC. So anyway, right after the USC game ends and I found my stories, I briefly checked Twitter. I found out that in this Georgia Southern upset of Nebraska, Clay Helton kicked an 18-yard field goal. He kicked a field goal from the one-yard line. And Georgia Southern also was intercepted from the two. And it had several special teams mishaps. They did. So, they did. Our Southern won this game in spite of Clay Helton. Oh my God! As a twenty-three point dog in Lincoln over Scott Frost. I mean, it's or, just perfect. Or, or maybe they won the game because of Clay. Maybe he got them where they needed to be. I mean, he's a better coach than any, than anybody they've had probably previously. So it's certainly an upgrade. And he's apparently a better coach than Scott Frost. There you go. Nebraska, he might be available. And and you know what? You know what? This also shows that, you know, Scott Frost won a, a New Year's Six Bowl and and uh, Clay Helton's done the same. And it's kind of like, True. Kind of like True. John Fox getting to two Super Bowls as an NFL coach or Byron Scott making two NBA finals. You know, sometimes you just have these coaches that, that win happens. the lottery, but then – over the longer course of time, you know, nature has its way of revealing who's strong and who's weak. It's fascinating. 